Welcome fellow filmmakers. This is the YouTube video production workshop and we recorded the live version but the audio wasn't turned on to my microphone for the live version so I'm going to re-record it for everyone. I know that we had some people miss and then also we're going to be putting this on YouTube for people who are interested in uh, following along. So if you're following along uh, on YouTube we will be posting all the videos at some point and we will have a link to all of them in the description of, of each video uh, as we create them. So if you if they're not there, be patient. We'll be posting them um, as soon as as soon as they come out. So my name is Jason Love. You can see my work at uh, I'm a YouTube uh, partner, um, which means I can monetize my videos and certain privileges for that. And then you can also see my work on Amazon Prime. Uh, some of my uh, one of my documentaries is up there, and then I have several going up. So hopefully this year, which is 2021. Uh, I've also done work with PBS, BuzzFeed, and Scientific American, doing you know short, re usually related around um, different projects that I'm working on. And um, I've also worked with, uh, I have to think about this, ABC. Um, I've also worked with, um, what else have I worked with? There's qu quite a bit, and it ends up being a lot of, of um, freelance work, um, a lot of it, specific projects, uh, and kind of all over the board as far as different, uh, a lot of things that I make are made for YouTube or for social media. And I should probably go into this now, um, just so that people, uh, have a better understanding of who I am is that I don't consider myself a great filmmaker. That's, uh, I can make films. I can tell a story. But my real skill is around media marketing, um, YouTube, uh, YouTube views, uh, around SEO, around YouTube, and um, things like that. And then also um, m having channels do better. So a lot of my freelance work is either people hiring me to help them make videos. And again, I my skill set tends to be more around documentaries. Um, I, I would like to get into more fictional narratives, such as you know bigger budget movies, things like that. But really, my focus has been, um, and, and probably will continue to be, is around again documentaries, how tos, things made again for for YouTube. Um, but I have friends who who do, you know, and, and connections and peers throughout the industry that do um, all sorts of different types of projects. You know, everything from from marketing, specifically marketing videos, to uh, corporate corporate videos, um, you know, like how how to do certain certain procedures so that they can show their their new workers, um, all the way up to people who are working on TV and and, and films and, and bigger budget things. Um, and so, with that, again, usually when I'm looking, like if I was going to have a bigger budget. I would actually hire someone to do a lot of my filming if, if I have a bigger budget. Uh, there's certain things that I would, I would, uh, or even like audio as well, where I can do audio, um, especially with documentaries, I can get away with it. But if I was going to do something that had any kind of budget, I would try to bring in people who who are more um, who are more skilled in those areas. Also, I would say I, I am uh, another one of my skill sets is is production, which is you know working with logistics and budgets and things like that. So. Uh, again, most of myself, you know, under the no budget or low budget range, but um, that is something where more of the, the business side of and um, lo logistics and getting a project going. So, but this workshop. So for this workshop, we have we're going to cut it down into four weeks, and each week we're going to learn a different part of the production process. Uh, with, with the last week being uh, sharing the the project that you made. So we have pre production. Uh, specifically talking about how to get more views with planning, production, improve quality, increase watch time, and increase views. Uh, again, that's a way to increase the number of um, views overall, getting new people. If you increase your watch time, and you, it'll naturally increase the number of views because YouTube wants more people to see your videos. Um, Post-production, so editing and distribution. And then the final one being project sharing, um, being around how to, again, how to get, we're gonna 
within the the live class we're gonna have people share their project but we're also gonna cover monetization so share finished videos and how people make careers with youtube so how do people make money uh with youtube the goal of the class, you'll make a video during this class following the production process and you'll get feedback along the way. If you're following us later or you know you missed a couple classes, um, feel, free to, feel free to share those in the comments if you can. Uh, YouTube sometimes doesn't like it when there's links in the comments, but um, otherwise find, find some friends also. You know, Just say, hey, what do you think of this film? I think that's a huge part of the production process that people don't, don't think about, especially when you become a, a better filmmaker is you have to get that feedback and whether that feedback when you're early, you can't get feedback from your viewers because you don't have viewers yet. And so a good way to get feedback is just to say, Hey, can you check out this video and tell me, you know, when did you get bored? How, uh, would you recommend this to people? You know, those things, especially if they're friends, you want to try to get friends who will give you real feedback. I mean, you want to have ones that will you know, kind of be nice as well, maybe sugarcoated a little bit, but you want to be like, okay, what here, especially if they watch the kind of video you do. So if you do gaming videos and you find someone who watches game videos, say, Hey, what's, what videos do you watch? Why do you watch them? Here, watch mine. Why, you know, what, what is mine missing? You know, it might be, uh, it's, it's not engaging enough. It's not funny enough. It could be stuff like that. And, and that could be, it can be hard to take, but it's one of those things where you have to say, okay, how can I make this better? Do I want to be funnier? Do I, you know, am I, or do I want to maybe focus more on information? Maybe that's my skill set. And this is my journey as well. So, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from experience with, there's a lot of, I've been making videos a long time and, you know, the kinds of videos I wanted to make slowly become the videos that people like. You have to find kind of a balancing act. You have to, you have to enjoy making the videos um, if you want to do it long term, you know, and you want to make it like a fun career, then you have to enjoy it. But you have to, again, find that balancing act of um, finding what people, what you enjoy making and what people enjoy watching. Um and that just takes time. Some people nail it right away and other people don't. So um, we're also going to learn to make better YouTube videos and then better understanding of the YouTube algorithm, which means more views. And um, we'll talk more about that throughout this throughout this program. Okay. So this is for those who are taking the live workshop. And since this is a, pre, a, a re-recording, um, since we're recording it over again, um, we don't, we don't have to, but feel free to, to drop your YouTube channel and tagline in the, in the comments. And just for those of you who don't know what tagline is, it's, it's a one sentence of what your channel does. So for example, I, I one of my channels I do is autism all the mode and we do documentaries on autism or tagline could be, uh, we help promote autism awareness through telling individual stories um and then uh or we also do stuff about parenting so parenting children on the autism spectrum so that was a little bit of a longer tagline but you can get it down to, to one or two sentences kind of explaining um you know do you make video games i make video game videos to that are entertaining or i do um what are those called the long where, where you play where you play the video game all the way through the long basically where people can sit down and watch the whole video game to kind of see what each level looks like long play long play video games something like that um and then what is your goal of this class which you can put it in the comments if you'd like of this video put it in the comments of this video if you'd like all right and this is just a heads up for those who are taking this class in the future uh we are filming these workshops and then we'll be posting them online. We'll be cutting out a lot of the extra. Um, we'll be cutting out some of the parts, so so we won't show the parts where the students are sharing their stuff, just because there's no real reason to have that, other than, um, you, yeah, there's no real reason to, to have that in there uh, for for future students. Um, and so we just want to give you a heads up that that's your questions and stuff. Part of doing it live and recording it live is nice is that you get asked the questions. So it's better to, if you can attend, if you're able to. Uh, again, if you're in the future and, and this class is no longer going on, then um, you should try to get into one of my future classes. Okay, did you fill out the form? For those who, who are in the workshop, I need you to fill out the form to fulfill the grant that I'm working on that, that pays for this class right now. And so um, we'll probably have future classes that will cost money. So. The nice thing about you filling out that form is it makes my life easier 
and it makes the grant writing process a lot easier because we can have the data we need to um, to cover our costs to, to make it possible for us to fund this these workshops. Okay, here we go. The first step is pre-production is planning, right? So when you when you're making videos, you want to think about why someone should watch your content when you create your videos. Right? That's something that lots and lots of people do not do. And to be honest with you, nine, there's a huge number. And I, 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 I'm just going to make up some numbers because it's it's uh, probably hard to find these num the reality of these numbers anyways. But my understanding is like 95% of YouTubers you know, never get over 1,000 subscribers or something like that, right? Because there's so many people starting YouTube channels and then quitting. Um, and then when you get to like the top 1%, those are the ones. And then you get to like the top 0.5%. Like then it's like the top tier ones. But you know, the, the, the vast, vast majority of YouTubers get hardly any views, hardly any subscribers. And again, that's not bad. If you get a hundred, a hundred views, that's amazing. If you get, um, a hundred subscribers, that's amazing. Like you should be excited, but the reality is, is it's a lot of work. And, you know, if you're making YouTube videos to get views and to, you know, potentially make either money or just make a connection with other people in whatever topic you're covering, um, you need to plan. You need to plan at least somewhat, right? So you want to think about who, why someone should watch your content when they create the video. Okay. So the way you do this is you start off with you think, okay, what is, what is your video, right? The one you're about to create with one sentence, super simple. So, um, this video, for example, is a how to plan YouTube video, but specifically around a workshop, um, since it is just recording my, my workshop, right? So what is your video? It's a YouTube video on how to plan YouTube videos. Very meta. Uh, who's it for? Okay, same thing. Who is this? Who is this uh, video for? So this video is for people who are relatively new to YouTube. They obviously know what YouTube is. They probably watch probably a lot of YouTube, but the reality is they that they they're, they're new. Um, now this information is helpful for people who have been making a lot of videos who might even have you know a couple thousand subscribers but um we're gearing towards the smaller end and what that does is it tells us smaller as, as far as far as subscribers and views count um the reason why you want to know who is it for is because it determines what is in your content so for example today we're doing a video um I am not using a lot of, of bigger terms because I assume people don't know what SEO means, which is search engine optimization. Still doesn't really explain what that means. It means uh, how to how to optimize a video. You might not know what optimize means. Um, it's a way to make the video best for YouTube to want to share it. Boom. That's kind of an easier way to say it, right? So the what terminology you use. So a good a good example we had in the past was we had a student who did a video about um, we had a, a, a 4-H student who did a video about milking cows right so he could make one for industry cow people and say this is how we do it this is the information so he could he could talk you know he could talk equipment he could talk uh, you know specific process he could talk about you know potential you know, there's a part where they have to like clean the udders, you know? So it's like, okay, they, he could talk about like potential diseases, which he could still do. But if he's talking to a beginner, like he was for the video, he wants to make it not overwhelming. He wants to simplify it. He wants to talk, you know, talk um, without using what we call jargon, which is, you know, these, uh, actually, I don't know, more industry terms. He w more, that's probably a better word. Uh, industry, so not using industry terms. Uh, again, you know, if you're doing Minecraft, you're doing Minecraft for beginners, they're not going to know, they might not know what these characters are. But if they've been, you know, if they're advanced players and you're showing them how to do something advanced, then you can take the liberty to use all the terms that, uh, that the community uses. All right, so here's an example. And this is a good example, too, of where uh, I ended up switching up my... Um, my who it was for. So this is a film we did. Uh, I got a, oh, I can't think of the term all of a sudden. An investor. So an investor came up and said, hey, I want to do a film on the Milwaukee Mafia. Specifically this man named Frank Bellastieri. Great. 
um, was was putting the film together, and the question became, what is what is this video? The video is a uh, documentary about Frank Balasiri while covering um, a generic cover of the Milwaukee Mafia. Partially, the reason why we did a generic cover of the Milwaukee Mafia um, was because people, a lot of people, want to know who Frank Balasiri is, but a lot of people do. Um, so we threw both in there. So it made it interesting to people who didn't know who that was, which I didn't know who that was. Um, and then who is the video for? So that was where, when we made this video, the video was for people who are just interested in his Milwaukee history who might not, um, who, who were not interested in mafia stuff, right? So it was uh, being like the whole organized crime. Um, there's all these, like, again, using terminologies, there's all these terminologies used uh with an organized crime that I didn't know and that I assumed the viewer wouldn't know. And so what I learned after making it from feedback through the comments was that the vast majority of people watching it were not just people from Milwaukee. They were people who were interested in organized crime overall. So we included things such as what were the hierarchies of the organization um, and more defining like what is what is the mafia. And people who watched it said, you know, why are you defining mafia? Everyone knows who the mafia is. And it's like, well, I, I I didn't know. And so we quickly turned our next videos. Um, after this, we made them more towards people who already knew those terms. And the focus really became more on the life of the individuals and what made them different from other characters within those, again, the historical uh, context. So going along with, with the planning process, um, once you figure all that out, you need to think about what type of script writing you're gonna create. You're gonna need to think about what you're creating. There's a couple of situations, maybe certain video game uh, video game vlogs or whatever you call them where you're, where, where you're playing a video game, where you're not gonna use any type of script. Uh, maybe a day in the life you won't use a script, but you're still gonna wanna come up with, actually I should take that back. You still wanna have an outline for the most part. There are certain, certain situations with vlogging where you wouldn't necessarily have a script. Um, the issue with those is, uh, is, is, you, is it's hard to make a good story. Um, sometimes you have to create the script after you had the, if you're doing a vlog, a lot of times you'll finish your day and say, okay, how do I make this into a story? And that's the situation you wanna be in usually. Uh, so option one is a word for word. This is where you literally write down word for word. The issues with this is, when you read it, you might see the person's eyes moving back and forth as they read. Uh, people also tend to read kind of strangely when they're when they're trying to focus. So, for example, if I say, "What is your video about?" like that's me trying to read the the slide. Um, there's certain weird pauses where you don't get that. You get a more natural feel if um, if you do outline or talking points. Now, that's not always true. There's certain like when we do the the the, the true crime documentaries that we we're talking about the um organized crime documentaries we use a word for word script because the fact that the person doesn't have uh the narrator who we, we get to, to read it is not it has does not know that information they, they need to read it to, to be able to get the information across and then we use a teleprompter but i assume most people don't have access to teleprompters or just don't want to hire you know there's no they don't want to go through that process. You can get ones for your phones um, that are helpful, that are just, you read it from your phone. But even then, it, you kind of can see the eyes moving a little bit. So you have to get someone who's pretty skilled at that. And personally, I do not have that skill. Um, both reading naturally without sounding like I'm reading and also um, to be able to do it without my eyes looking like I'm scanning a page. Okay, option number two is outlining talking points. And that's what I'm doing now, even with this presentation you can see is right these are basically talking points i have an i i just know the information good, well enough that i can talk about each of those and cover the main points and hopefully adding a little bit of stories or context um with each right uh oh actually let's go back so the outline and talking points one of the, the downsides of the outline and talking points is if you're you're usually going to end up editing more and that's the same again when you're not have a script depending on what again there's sometimes certain situations where you might not edit at all but usually with like a, a outline and talking points i end up editing myself a lot because i'll miss i'll i'll mispronounce things i will 
say things in a confusing way and I have to cut them out. All right, and then we're gonna talk about storyboarding. I'm gonna give examples of storyboarding. Let's see, yeah, we can still do that. So we're gonna do, um, let me see if I can bring up the whiteboard, Google's whiteboard thing, Google's whiteboard. And then we're gonna give, we'll give two examples of this, all right? Uh, before we go into that, oops, before we go into that, let's talk about what's the best type of video. So the best type of video, I don't know if you can guess this, and we had a student who did guess this in, in the class, is how-to videos. And so how-to videos do are the best overall, right? If you look at the very, very top YouTubers, probably more like pranks and whatnot, and, and no, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I don't know. If it's definitely personality driven, and all your videos are personality driven, meaning that people start to enjoy hearing from the person who is making the videos. Uh, if you look at like the top earners, it's probably not how tos. But if you look at like overall, like what largest percentage of individuals are making a living, it's going to be how to videos, um, and that's for a variety of reasons. But the big reason is is because of search engine, right? YouTube is a search engine. People go there and say. How do I make YouTube videos? How do um, how do I boil an egg? How do I how do I clean um, how do I yeah how do I clean out my dishwasher? Something like that, right? Those are specific things people are looking for. YouTube is the second largest search engine, only followed by Google, and Google owns YouTube. So a lot of times they they claim they don't do this, but a lot of times if you go into a search, you'll see a YouTube video pop up. Um, but then this is even going beyond that if you're not doing how-to videos, you need to think about how how would people find my videos through the search engine. So for example, I do the, the mafia documentaries, right? And so those mafia documentaries, the true organized crime documentaries are, um, people are searching for them, right? It's not a how-to, but people are, are looking through them. And then um, you use what we call keywords. And so those are basically search terms, things that people are specifically looking for. So um, Vlogging is a search term for for YouTube videos. Uh, you know how to be a better vlogger, um, how to make better YouTube videos, how to YouTube workshops, things like that. Um, and we'll get more into that. It's it pretty complicated. We could do a whole course on that, and, and we might in the future do a whole course on that. But this is just again, if you're doing video games, you have to think about okay, what people are probably going to look for the title of that video game. What else? What's making mine different enough that will draw people in and then create keywords around that. Um, and you can really for any topic that you come up with. So here we have, okay, some examples. Um, so we're gonna go with some examples of storyboarding, okay? We wanna talk a little bit about searching just to sort of set you up, talking about you know, back when we're talking about what kind of videos you wanna create. So now the example I'm gonna give is um, teaching a, teaching nutrition we had a I did a nutrition video with UW extension um, I gotta see if I can find it so they wanted to it was during COVID they wanted to be able to teach the nutrition class that they normally teach students which just covers covers you know how to make different snacks so Kind of going back to the original process. Yeah, let's see if we can go back. So going back to here, what is your video? It's a video on how to make what they're calling sun butter energy bites. Who's it for? It's for for youth and their families. So it's not, you know, it's not for cooks. It's not for, um, it's not for like the family cook. You know, the person who makes the meals at home. It's for families to make it together or for you know maybe a younger uh you'd have to be someone old, old enough to do to, to cook for themselves so um so examples in here where it's good to know is not in this video but in in past in the different video that we did uh, about green smoothies we had to give safety precautions because it would have been you know working with younger people so when you're using the blender make sure you do it with your parent Make sure you don't stick anything in the blender. Things that, again, are common for people who are around the kitchen, but you won't, since these are videos for 
families and, and people who might not have that experience, um, you want to make sure you do that. So let me bring up that whiteboard again. So I want to show you quickly. Oh, that one, there it is. Okay. I'll show you quickly. So we shot the video uh, with three three cameras. And so instead of normally when you do a storyboard, uh, these are more like thumbnails. I should call them, we'll call them thumbnails because storyboard is like a whole long, like storyboarding a whole thing. But usually we end up calling it storyboard anyways for some reason. Um, but I think the technical term is really thumbnails, right? So we had a one camera that was above. So you would see their hands like that. And then we had stuff, you know, on the table, right? And then this. Now, the reason why we're doing this is it helps us planning later when we actually start setting up for our shots. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in production. So, like, if we do this, we know, like, okay, what angle do we need this camera at and what angle do we need this camera at? So now let's go ahead and watch. and I'm a nutrition educator in the health and well-being department of UW-Madison Division of Extension in the Waukesha County office. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a quick, easy, and healthy snack. All right, so today we're going to be making... So here you go. You see that's from storyboard one or storyboard two, this one. And this is, this is basically storyboard one right so it gives us an idea um, now the other reason you would use you would use the storyboards is to make to explain something more complex to a team so here's a great example we did with um, for one of our workshops that we did in in the high school uh, I'll take me a second to pull that up all right. Okay. So we had a situation in the video. Uh, let me see. There's there, where there is a screen, right? And what happens is you don't realize you're seeing a screen, and it pulls it. It zooms out, or yeah, it zooms out, right? So then you have a person here. And we had a person here. The other part of doing this is making sure, wow, that person has a big head. That's all right. The other person is, is we're using it to see that we have symmetry, right? So we have the symmetry of these people on each side, which sort of makes a balance. There's one here. There's one here. There's, if you had like two here, right, that would kind of throw off the balance. It just feels slightly, slightly off. So when you storyboard, it also helps to plan out your, what we, you call your framing, um, just to make sure that the, the aesthetics um, are good, that, that they that they work out, um, and it looks it looks good, it's like that. So like if you had a lot of stuff over to the right, it would it would make it off balance unless you're trying to do that on purpose. So anyways, when we did this, we, we kind of did a quick like that, and then we just had um, I'm not sure what these are called, but we use them sometimes they call like zoom out, zoom in lines, and we we'll just say zoom out but it made it possible to sort of explain like okay the camera is going to be literally this square showing the screen and then it's going to zoom out showing um, showing the people who are working at that computer I should have done a little keyboard thing okay we'll watch that video so you can see what I'm talking about all right make a video that shows what we do in this club guys I've got a great idea. Picture this. We start with a lightsaber wipe. Our hero runs back and engages in a deadly battle with a Sith Lord. They're duking it out. Meanwhile, we zoom out and see a camera crew on the set recording the action. Zoom out again. What's this? The actors are editing the video. Another zoom. The same crew from before is there. Zoom back in. Now, we're on the set of the Death Star and our characters find themselves locked in a crazy battle between good and evil. 
that's literally the worst thing I've heard. Here's another example right here where like storyboarding made sense. So when we started, um, a, we had we had students who were doing these special effects and then also for the actors so we could say, okay, we need you to make this crash effect so that we can have this come over. And then, you know, basically these are pointing to the name of that workshop. Um, so again, these are used, especially if you're gonna have a team, it's, it's helpful. Um, but if you're working on something else, you don't necessarily have to have those. It's just good to to have a clear idea of what you're going to film before you start filming. All right, during this time, we had our students go ahead and break out and and work on on these questions. If you're if you're watching this video, you can do this at the end. So again, what is your video? Who is it for? What type of script and storyboards? And, and you're going to want to do this. Um, for those who, who are in the actual workshop, this live workshop, we're going to need it for next next week. And those who are not in the live workshop, you can um, join next. Uh, you could do this and then watch the next video. That's probably that probably be a safe bet to do that. Um, also, those who who want to for this week's can do an optional video. So, if we've had students in the past where they're they're already making videos, so we still want you to do. You know the what's your video who's it for what type of script and then storyboard um but we want you to have uh if you want to create the video go ahead i don't i don't want to hold anyone back the more you more videos you create the more experience you get and as long as you're trying to learn from each video um you're going to get better over time all right so that's it for this workshop let's create some awesome videos throw your questions in the in the comments below we're going to try to answer as many as we can um and next week we will be recording the live one so we'll get more of the live in-person questions um and follow along that way so again thanks thanks for watching i hope hope that was enjoyable uh and at the very least helpful <laughs> uh have a have a wonderful day